This week we talk pollock, brown and ferox trout and pike. We talk sea fishing from boat and shore. We talk the amazing Tolson River in Subarctic Canada. We talk to big pike hunter Steve Eddie Dusek from Minneapolis. Our studio guest is Jean-Philippe Carnet, a Frenchman based in Mayo, guiding along the wild Atlantic way. We have our book review, and of course, there's no show like a Pascal show, our shore snack specialist. Welcome to another episode of fishtalk.tv, the weekly online show for all of us fish heads out there. I'm Alan Broderick, I'm in the studio again in Crooked Wood, County Westmeath, broadcasting around the world from the centre of Ireland. My studio guest this week is Jean-Philippe Carnet, who's a man who's come to live in Ireland. He's developed a business over in Lewisburg in County Mayo. He's a fishing guide par excellence, but he's also a wonderful lure angler in his own right and a great guy all round. Jean-Philippe, welcome to Fish Talk. Nice. Thanks a lot, uh, Alan. May I call you JP for short? It's a you long can, name. of course, with no problem. Now, where were you born? Where, where, give me your background. I, I was born uh, 34 years ago in France, uh, in uh, the Sologne, exactly. The Sologne, where Sologne. is that? It's uh, 200 kilometers under Paris. Okay. It's uh, a lovely area. lot of uh, river, small lock. It's is it near the Loire? It's under the Loire. Okay, under that. Under that. So you get a very nice climate down there. Yes, yeah, I get a very nice climate. And I grew up uh, nearly in front of the river, le, the Cher. Uh, my parents used to have a house over there, uh, 400 meters from the house. Now tell me, JP, your young life, how you started off fishing, your pop, your granddad, or was it you, you, you yourself? Uh, as far as I can remember, uh, I used to fish. Uh, my uh, grandfather bring me, my father bring me. The first picture I get uh, uh, with a fishing rod in my hand was uh, around four years old. You started uh, young. Yes, but I was lucky I get a small uh, lock just in front of the house also. So uh, I was uh, very young. You could practice there quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For well, the first time it was for roach, uh, bream and uh, stuff like that. Okay. Fish like that. It was. Uh, so fun. your first fish, would you remember what it might have been? Oh no. Gardon? <laughs> Maybe a gardon, I don't know, I don't want to lie. I'm boasting there, by the way, out there, <laughs> viewers. I'm speaking my little bit of franglais. A gardon is a roach, rootless, rootless. But it's a lovely fish. It's one of the ones I've shown in an earlier show. That lovely red finned, blue back and the silver sides. A lovely prey fish. Yes, lovely. Yeah. And a good bait for and pike. Also. <laughs> <laughs> but it's after that. Yeah. So you, you, you grew up through the ranks with more experience as you go along. As the years roll by, you're now yeah. to your teens. And are you fishing every weekend? Yes, every weekend, every weekend. Uh, every uh, Saturday morning with my father, uh, we go uh, fishing. I have... How many in family? Uh, I get two uh, half brothers. Uh, they didn't fish at all. I was the only one. And, uh, and that's all. Now, what attracted you into fishing? What, what, what's the magnetism there that brought you into fishing? I don't know. I don't know. It's. Uh, uh, I like uh, to be uh, quiet and alone. Uh, Solitary. And yes. And uh, it's, it's particular because uh, I do guide and I organizing uh, fishing tours now. So it's quite Which uh, is almost a contradiction. Exactly, exactly. But it's still uh, working. It is very much yeah, so. Yeah. You're working with the nature yes. and the elements. Exactly. Which exactly. is also an interesting mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And when you then decided to come to Ireland, what age were you when you came here? I get 21, nearly 22 years old. So you're a young guy. Yeah. And what? It what was just after my study. Uh, what did you study in, in, in France? Aquaculture. Sorry? Aquaculture. Aqua in French. This man is a similar breed to me. Aquaculture, like myself. So you're a fish farming background. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. Wh why did you come to Ireland then? It was an opportunity. Uh, my best friend, uh, Laurent, was in Ireland for holidays. And we have a dream about Ireland, about fishing in, uh, in Ireland since we were younger, because we, we have learned everything together at the beginning. There's a lot of publicity in France on yeah, the TV yeah, about yeah. Ireland. Uh, on, the, on the paper. On the papers. Yeah. And you were dreaming about this I, wonderful... I used to, I used to read uh, La Pêche et les Poissons reports okay. about yeah. uh, uh, Ireland and everything. And uh, he gets the chance with his father uh, to go uh, in the island for uh, a fishing uh, a holiday. holiday. Fishing trip, yeah. yeah. And he meets somebody over there, a French uh, fishing guide called uh, Sylvain Duvinage. And uh, Sylvain uh, was uh, looking for somebody to, to become uh, a ghillie. 
he was looking for some uh, young guys. Where was he operating? He was operating in County Sligo and Donegal okay. also. And uh, when he came back to France, Laurent, uh, he told me uh, I have found something to do. Quite interesting. I was still uh, agree to, uh, not still agree. Uh, uh, You're still interested, in interested, other words. Yeah, you, yes. you, 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 you get uh, sometimes uh, yeah. as pour le montage. You <coughs> Sorry. I don't understand now. Uh, I know, I know. Did you cut uh, during the No, filming? no, this is this is live now we're doing. Oh, it's alive. Uh, yes, Sorry, absolutely, but no. But so <laughs> this this gentleman, he, he encouraged you then. Uh, he encouraged you. He encouraged me, yes. And uh, he, he, uh, he, he, um, how could I explain? He, he, I was working with him uh, for four months. He showed me ev all the techniques, everything. Lure fishing, dead baiting, all the Irish techniques. And after four years, uh, I said to Sylvan, uh, it's, uh, it was, uh, thanks a lot, uh, we are still friends, uh, but I would like to develop a bit myself. Sure. Uh, I would like to do my own. Uh, I think it's in many of us who have this urge to be a fishing guide to eventually do your own thing. Yes. Because it is a very individualistic type of a business or a profession. Yes. Yeah. So you're now, what is the name of your business? My, alors, my, uh, the name of the limited company is Island Fishing Adventures. Irelandfishingadventures.com, is that correct? No, it's the name of the company. Well, that's your it's company? Yes. And, and what do you call it? What's your domain? Pêcheirlandconemara.com. Okay, that's in France. And do you have a, 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 an English version for the English? No, not yet. not yet. Not yet. I have to so work on it. So that's Pêcheirlandconemara. That's P-E-C-H-E-I-R-L-A-N-D-E. -E, Ireland Connemara, C-O-N-N-E-M-A-R-A. But you'll, have, you'll be able to see it on the credits later on. But that's a business, so I, I take it you're just targeting the French market. Mm. And is that a good market for you? Uh, it brings uh, 85 percent of my uh, customers. So, uh, now I get to you. And what makes you? Do you believe what Excuse you are? Like, is it because you are French, you have an advantage dealing with this home home market in France? Uh, yes, I think so. Because the problem we have, uh, as you saw before, we are not so good in English in France. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest problem, and the French uh, customers are more. Um, they are very comfortable being in their own language, talking with you. Exactly. exactly. Well, listen, folks. Um, Jean Philippe JP is staying with us. He's my guest this week on FishTalk.tv. But up next is the old bit of footage that I love going back to revisit. Is my good friend uh, Pascal Briso on the shore of a lake, and he's doing me something beautiful in the way of a shore snack. Pascal, we've had a nice morning at the lake, but it's wintry. What are you doing for me today? Uh, today we will do uh, uh, some uh, pork loin with a mushroom, penne, uh, some um, uh, cream on uh, green peas. Wow. Yes. I mean, that's really cordon bleu you're doing for me. It's nice, yeah? Wow. Okay, let's go for it. Let's boys. go for it. Yeah, right. we're all hungry. Fantastic. Okay. We'll start with olive oil. Olive oil on the hot pan. Yes, hot pan. And of course, that's some roast that you steal of the oh. Sunday of your grandma <laughs> yes. and you dice it in small cube. Lovely. Okay. Right. Uh, it's very important that it's already cooked, of course. Yeah. Uh, to uh, speed up the process. And you have a really hot pan, I see. Yes, very important. Yeah. You have to heard singing, the yeah. pan. It's very it important. Is. Yeah. It's singing for us. Oh, singing. That's for sure. It's oh, calling you. That's wonderful. You're ah, wonderful. Look. Mm. Yeah. After a morning out and your toes are like two blocks of ice, gladden your heart. That will help you a lot. Oh, lovely. I see you just give it a nice color there. A mix of salt and pepper. Okay. Like that. Just a bit of sea salt and pepper. Yes, sea salt and pepper. Let it brown Let nicely. Let it brown nicely, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's nice. Very important. So this is just pork chunks basically from a roast or whatever, yes, already really. cooked. Co of course, yes. Um, and speeds the whole process. Yes, speeds the whole process on, because that would take too much time to yeah, cook. Yeah, we're hardly even on, a minute here. Yeah, it's exactly, already... a minute. Look, you give a nice brown colour yeah, yeah. and that will give, give the oh, taste to the sauce. It's wonderful. Now, now yeah. we will add the mushroom. So you're the old mushroom yeah. champignon going in? Champignon, yeah, the champignon de Paris, very of course. Nice, very nice. Okay. Nice and so dice. You dice them up very nicely. Exactly. Small bit because when you are fishing on a boat, you don't have a knife. 
and you have to eat it straight away. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so you're being very thoughtful for us. It's very important. Yes, yeah. You're a very kind soul, Pascal. It's really nice. But it's, mm, well, nice. it's fantastic. But uh, yeah. how long about it's will happen now? It's hard to convey now? this, the beautiful aroma, particularly when you're hungry, after being out all morning. Completely. Yeah. Uh, to add for the sauce, we just use some bisto. Bisto? Uh, okay. Just a little bit, yes. Okay. Uh, you don't have to bring the pot with you, of course. But okay. just a pinch. So you probably put about what, one and a half teaspoon in there, yes. perhaps? Yes, maximum. Maximum, maximum. maximum yeah. And you're just going to brown the thick of this now? Yes. And after, the best part, of course. Some courgeoisie, ah, ah, ah. French cognac. Mm -hmm. People would think we have a drink problem. No, 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 we don't. Stop. It's just Wonderful. to keep us warm. Oh, lovely. You know, drink wheel. Flame it off again. Fair enough. Very nice, very nice. That's lovely. I knew he was going to take an action against you for singeing my eyebrows. Yeah. This is Make lovely, you all Pascal. Nice and yeah. <laughs> Pascal, it's very nice. This is really lovely. I see, voila. Oh. And it's thickening as well now with the bisto. Yes, yeah, the bisto get. get uh, Thickness of sauce. Yeah. And now to finish it, of course, we would put some nice whipped cream. Whipped cream. Oh, but just plain whipped cream. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Just be generous, you know, yeah, because be we have generous. to share yes, it. Yes. It's very important. I noticed that you like a lot of cream. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Look. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Never trust a skinny chef, by the way. <laughs> now we do that way. Oh, it's really appetizing, Pascal. Yeah. The aromas are fantastic. Thank you very much. I see that now we will reduce it uh, with it. So will you reduce that somewhat? Y yes, so about 10%. Uh, 10% yes. Okay. So we'll just run through it again. You've got your pre-cooked diced pork. Yes. You've got the champignon, the mushrooms. Yes, the mushrooms. You, you put in the salt and the pepper mix. Yes. Sea salt and pepper olive mix. Olive oil, don't Ol forget. The olive oil already in the hot pan. When everything is warm after, you add some dry bisto. Dry bisto. And after you put your and fresh you flame it cognac. And you cognac. flame it. Yes, yes. 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 So you add the cream. And Pascal, if for example somebody did not have the cognac, could you do any other substitute? Yes, if you don't want even uh, alcohol, yeah. you, you can you can use uh, uh, even uh, apple juice would apple, be nice. Apple juice, yes, nice. yes. Okay. But uh, cognac or white wine. Or oh, white wine. If you don't uh, like the cognac. Okay. But uh, we we mind do this recipe with apple juice. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It give a wee sweetness to the sauce. That's great. I like the idea of the apple juice as well. Yeah. Because but you know, a pork uh, pork uh, go very pork well with, with, yeah, with apple alcohol, of course. Yes. yes. Yeah. The tartness of the apple cuts into the fat and the greasiness of the pork. Completely. So and give a wee, a wee uh, uh, acidic kick yeah, as well. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Yes, yes. It is. So this, I can see it now, is bubbling away, reducing. Yes. We wait just one minute. We're that probably, we're probably here six minutes at this stage, and we almost have our lunch ready. It's not really ready. Oh, no, we will add Pascal some nice yeah. penne. Penne already pre-cooked. Yes, pre-cooked. So boiled salt and water. Boiled salt and Eight, water. Nine, ten minutes. Uh, maximum. Maximum. Maximum, yeah. Because you will reheat it again, or don't overcook them. Okay. Oh, I see. Because we yes. will, technically, we will uh, yes. reheat. Because we're reheating now, so Completely. we want to balance it. Very good. So that will be ready now. Now you add your penne. Hopla. This Looks is fantastic, like. yeah. Look, nice colour. That's a pretty nice taste of 10 minutes. Pascal, you must intend feeding the whole parish here, do you? Oh, but yes, we, we have some hungry monger behind the camera there. <laughs> we have to make it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we must feed them all. Well, look, we, oh, we go for the healthy option. Yeah. Peace for the we color on the taste. <laughs> yeah, this is just tokenism, I feel. Yeah, it looks exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Voilà. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, some nice. So you've got the peas in there on top of the penny of pasta. The, exactly. Look at I mean, the nice color, the nice mix it is. It's a feast for a king, isn't it? Oh, I think so. Yes, nice. You oh, know, it's a... Magnificent. Voila. Hoppala. Voila. voila. That would be perfect. Oh, this is wonderful. Well, I will be two minutes and we'll be ready to serve. I'll just mm. you can smell the cognac slightly it's wonderful yeah it has a the, lovely richness from it completely but all the alcohol is gone by yes, uh, yeah. the from bad and you use did. very little anyway yes and just the we the we uh, uh, test of the yeah. we want but it looks so appetizing and, and and the contrast between that and a sandwich i mean there's just no there's no contest no it's no contest no, no contest you, when you have this on a you cold eat day. like in a nice restaurant oh. outside yeah. in the wilderness look, 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 look what we have as our backdrop paradise yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's but Pascal, it is true that for a child, or if you have somebody in the boat and on a cold day, just gives you a whole zest for getting out again. Completely. Doesn't it? Yeah. Will I hold this for you? Yes. I will serve you. Hot. Oh, it's really nice. Uh -huh. I hope you are hungry. Oh, I am. Are you hungry, yeah? I think the whole crew are hungry. Okay. I noticed they were sharpening their teeth earlier with the file. Here you are, sir. Oh, that's wonderful, Pascal. Here, voila. Now I just need a spoon. And oh, yes. Yeah. Anyway. One of them. Here, here. Yep. 
Oh, sorry. Oh, merci beaucoup. I was organized. Yeah. Huh? Pascal, this is, I just know by the smells alone, the aroma. How do you feel that? Oh, it's fantastic. Well, what do you want to drink with that? And you can taste the cognac. Oh, you can, yeah. It is absolutely, you don't know what you're missing, but you're not getting any. <laughs> yeah, by the way. All right, thank you so much and see you next time. Bye-bye. It's really beautiful. Good? Oh, good. <laughs> You're watching fishtalk.tv, the weekly online show for all of us fish heads. You know, this resource, fishtalk.tv, is for you folks. It's an interactive show. We want you to send us your tweets, send us emails, just contact us through the webpage anyway, fishtalk.tv. We'd like to hear your news, views, comments, opinions, anything that's going on in your patch. But also let us know if there's anything on your chest that you want to get off and let us know and we can then air it on the show and talk about it. JP, yes, you're a man um, now in Ireland. You're over here. You're after the predatory fish. Tell yeah. me about how you set about getting this business going and what your love affair with predators is. Uh, predators, it's an uh, old story. Uh, I love predators. I love pikes. I love big trout. I love ferox trout and uh, all predators. Uh, I. Uh, I used to, uh, to, to focus myself on a big species, big, uh, big pike and big trout, because it's uh, an outstanding bite when you fish, particularly on my favorite techniques, who is jerk fishing. Jerk bait fishing. Ah, jerk bait. Yes. Jerk bait fishing. Yeah. Well, I think you've met your brother. <laughs> yes. I love it too. <laughs> oh, I think there's uh, quite a few fishermen who love the uh, jerk bait because it produces every year a big fish. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. Why do you specialize in jerk baits? Uh, because I was looking for big fish and after uh, using a lot of different techniques uh, I saw it was uh, one of the best to get big uh, big pike particularly. It's very selective. Very selective, yes. Very selective. Now, one of the things that we want to do on the show is when we're talking to our viewers mm -hmm. is for you, because you're an expert on this, to tell the viewers how you go about it, what rod you'd recommend, the braid or line you use. Will you give us the fundamentals of what your approach is? Uh, yes, with pleasure. So, uh, first of all, the rod. I use a rod about... Uh, Just we show that to the camera there like that. Like that. Yeah, so it's, it's six feet two. I, yes, I looked at it earlier. Exactly. It's a lovely rod. It's a nice uh, rod. It's a standard rod. rod. Yes, for uh, boat fishing. Yes. It's quite strong because I can uh, cast a, a lure uh, to uh, 140 uh, grams. 140 grams, okay, yeah. which is roughly about six ounces. Yes, something like that, yes. Yeah. Yes, and I use... Um, um, casting reel, uh, a Calcutta Shimano, this one. Calcutta Shimano, yeah, yeah that's a good, very, very good reel. One of World the best. Class. One, of, one the of the best, best. okay. Of what line are you using there? Alors, it's a big line. It, it will be uh, so strange. Unusual. I don't know this line. It, it will be strange for a uh, fisherman. It's uh, uh, 80 pound bread. Are you 65? I'm not worried. I, I like the different colors. So yeah, this it's is a jigging or uh, okay. Right. So it gives you every 10 meters or 5 meters? Every 10 meters, the, ch the color is changing. Okay. Very good. Okay, but on this one, it's a uh, Daiwa one. Uh, it's a new uh, eight. Uh, I'm going to just show the camera there now. Yes, I noticed there you have fluorocarbon in here, so you're using a shock leader joined to the braid. Exactly. Uh, a shock leader, it's uh, to make uh, the line uh, discreet. In, invisible in the water. Invisible in the water. So this is an advantage you reckon on? Oh, yes, particularly in the clear water. Uh, like uh, Loch Mask, Loch Cara, Loch uh, Corrib, uh, and also Loch Nafui, you, it's uh, very uh, clear. So you need to be very uh, discreet. You need to be very, very, invisible. very invisible. Yes. What I would call just being. I, I, I put uh, roughly uh, four meters. Four meters of, of this, and, and what fluorocarbon what, what, is what it? What breaking strain is this? Uh, it's, it depends. Nearly 100, uh, 100 pounds? No, I, I, at the end, at the end, it's. Yeah. 100. 100 uh, there, uh, okay. It's uh, 100 millimeters, so in pound it's roughly uh, 80, something 80 like pounds. that. 80 pounds, okay. Yeah. And uh, this one, it's uh, 60. 60, okay. So, will you show us some of your lures now? You brought some of your, yes. your special toys that I'm really <laughs> interested in toy, now. Yes. Yeah. Ah, you have quite, uh, quite a few. So uh, this, alors, this tube. This tube, I use That's this a big fellow. Just show to the camera. I, I use uh, this tube uh, for uh, deep water. 
And okay. how do you present jigging. that? It's not a jerk. No. Drinking water, jigging. So you drop it down to the bottom? Yes. When you go slack, Alors, you tighten up? Yes. Uh, I, uh, when I saw a fish on my fish finder, yeah. I try to stabilize the boat just yes. at the top of the fish. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, I drop the lure and I do some jigs. And you do some jigs. Now, these are jerk baits. We don't want to confuse people. That yes. other one was for vertical presentation. These are the jerk baits here. Now, what's this one called? This one is called the Duke. The, the Duke. Duke? Yeah, the Duke. It's uh, uh, the brother of the famous Buster Jerk. The Buster Jerk. Now, that has amazing rattle chambers. Yes, it's, an, uh, it's uh, my uh, alarm clock for Pike. Exactly. <laughs> I would say that's the dinner gong, like, come and eat me. Yes, yes, it's very good. And particularly, I'm very, uh, I'm very uh, I like uh, a lot this color, parrots. It's uh, one of my favorite colors. Yeah. Why, why do you like this type of jerkbait with the rattle chamber? What, what, what's the advantage? The advantage is uh, to, uh, for, the, for the pike, they, they hear the noise and they, if they are in a feeding, if they're feeding, yes. If they are feeding, yes. Sorry, uh, they can localize the, f uh, the lure quite fast. Okay, that's the most important thing, and uh, it's uh, annoying them a lot. You antagonize them. You yeah. make them aggressive. Yes, exactly. Yes. And, and so you've a lot of these here. Are they a side to side action? Yes, exactly. Side of side. Like swing, that. swing baits. Yes, yes. That's a lovely little one as well. There, isn't oh, it? This one is uh, my, one of my favorite also. My, I, I bring uh, some. Uh, just uh, an you, assortment. Uh, what type of technique do you use to get the best action out of these guys? Can you describe stop it? A, stop and go. Stop and go, okay. Stop so and go. What's, what's, the, what's the action of the rod tip and you? The rod tip, it's uh, when I am... Uh, do, do the camera there so you can see it the, there. Now. On the top of my uh, boat, you know, uh, it's uh, just to, to tight the line. Yes. Okay, it's very important because even when you cast, uh, the, it's a slow sinking, uh, most of the time, lure. Okay. okay? So, so it's they suspending. do. Yes, and they do a bit of wobbling. Yes. When they go. They do. Okay. So it's this is slowly settling through the water column. Yeah. How do you move this now? Describe it for uh, our viewers. I I, uh, I do uh, some uh, jerk. So it's a one two a stop one two a stop. And how much of a pause is it? How, how long is it? Like a beat of one two? It depends of the time of the year and how the the fish uh, goes. You know, uh, I I I like uh, be about two or three seconds. Okay. okay, to maximize the swing action side to side of the lure. Yes, and it's very important to, to, to just to be slow, you know, for big pike, you know. The big pike loves slow uh, action. Okay. Sometimes. Well, JP is my guest in the studio and he's staying with me this week. And um, he's going to show us now later on more techniques that will really get you fired up because this man is a specialist in jerkbait fishing, but he also goes the whole spectrum of predators, saltwater too as well. Now, up next is the book review. Eddie, what have you got for me this week? Well, this is a book, Al, that you sent me on Thanksgiving uh, years ago. It was one of Jeremy Wade's first book and Paul Booth's first book, um, entitled Somewhere Down the Crazy River. And it's about these two guys going on an expedition to fish the uh, monster fish in India called the Masur. That's the first part of the book. And the second part of the book is when they go to the deepest Africa down the Congo River fishing the Goliath tigerfish. And the book is fascinating, all the hardships that they had to go through to get up into these remote rivers in India and also the remote river uh, in the Congo dealing with uh, uh, the tribes, dealing with the Arabs, dealing with a lot of uh, political, uh, 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 you, would, you would call it, uh, in order to get into their territory, you'd have to pay a fee, you'd have to pay a tariff. And uh, it's just one of the best well-written books that I think I've ever read. And uh, did it, it's, it's fantastic. Did it make you feel like that you, as, as your own sort of great adventures that you've been on, that you sort of join them in one way as, a, as, a, as an elite adventure, that you've been on these amazing adventures as well. But what I was a, m remarkable about that book was, and I thought it was such a beautiful book to send you, was the fact that they were charged with espionage when they are in the Congo. Oh, yes. Anything that would cost them, anything that people could make money at, they would accuse them of. And, you know, they were fighting malaria, fi fighting dysentery, fighting uh, parasites all the time, and uh, they just kept going on and on and on until they did catch 
those fish that they were after. It's a truly great book, more than a soft adventure. This is a true adventure into the into these darkest areas of these two continents. And the thing, Eddie, also, and I know you're a really keen bookworm. You're a you're a real man who loves his books and words and all of that. That it, they're beautifully written books. It is. It is. Jeremy Wade and uh, Paul Boot are are fantastic storytellers. Great English and they hold your interest. They've done a fantastic job, one of the best fishing books that I've ever read. Yeah, and I remember, Eddie, when I sent it to you at the time, that it's a book that you can dip into and go back and retrace your steps with it and revisit it over and over again because it is a real adventure, a daring do, like a, almost like a boy's own or a Huckleberry Finn type of affair, but it was a real deal. And these guys pioneered and opened up both the Congo, which now is on the consciousness of a lot of us as a venue to go for these giant Goliath tiger fish. But back in the day, nobody went to that place. It was so dangerous. It was. It absolutely was. These tiger fish... They said they have 18 teeth, an inch and a half long, that look like something out of a saber-toothed tiger, a leopard, or a lion. And yeah. Eddie, show the book again to the viewers, what it is for the viewers. Keep it out to the left-hand side. Yeah, there it is. So somewhere down the crazy river, a journey in search of giant fish by Paul Boot and Jeremy Wade. And I believe it's still on Amazon. If you're lucky enough, you might come across it. It's not an easy book to get your hands on, but it's a beautiful read, Eddie. Eddie Dusek, Big pike yes, hunter from Waisata. They're the I teeth. Just want to show you a picture of that wow, character. they're the teeth. Thank you, Eddie. Eddie Dusek, thank you Thanks so much. much for doing the book review this week. I very much appreciate it. And we'll see you later on, and hopefully we'll catch up with you some stage during the year and tight lines and get a few of those big pike in the net. Thank you, Al. What a great title for a book, and what a great book. Somewhere Down the Crazy River by Paul Boot, Jeremy Wade, published by Sangha Books. Now, Pixelated is our photo competition for all of you fish heads. If you go to our website, fishtalk.tv, you'll be able to upload photographs and get in on the action and have a chance to win some great prizes. In fact, we've got a cache of prizes over here that are going to be sending out to Ben Caravasso, who's the winner of our first ever Pixelated competition. As you can see there, he's got wonderful stuff. He's got minnow baits for his trout fishing. He's got a fly reel here. He's got a great spinning reel already preloaded with mono. He's got a cache of floats here, various floats for various jobs and the minnows and the different lures he's getting. But a big thank you also to Jeff Cooper who generously donated this cache of prizes. Up next, we're going back to Wyzata in Minnesota to Steve Eddie Dusek, Big Pike Hunter. Eddie, you and a bunch of guys way back in the day were the pioneers who went to the Tolson River on the southeast shore of Great Slave Lake in the Northwest West Territories of Canada. Can you tell me about that? I sure can, Al. Great to talk to you again. Great to see in you. 1970, in 1977, Bill Tenney had heard from somebody up in the Northwest Territories at Great Slave Lake that there was a river that had monster pike in it. And, and so he went up there to test fish it, and he had four casts in the river. The four casts yielded a 22-pound, 24-pound, 25-pound, and a 26-pound consecutively. That's he knew amazing. he was on to something. He'd never, he'd never caught four fish that big in four casts, came back home and assembled a trip of guys to go back up there the next year, 1988 in June. I was one of those lucky people that he asked to go back up there, and it was Bill Tenney, myself, Jan Eggers from Europe, and John Barzen, who owned Barzen Seed Company and was one of Bill's uh, favorite people to fish with. He fished with bait casting and a fly rod. We flew up the Hay River and we went in by float plane. There was a twin otter up there owned by Carter Air Services and the sun uh, was flying it that day. We packed up all of our gear and we had to pick up Ray Beck, the trapper's wife, who trapped the Tolson River we had to pick her up at Fort Resolution because we didn't know where to land the plane. <laughs> it was such a remote river. And picked up Doris. She sat in the she sat in the, in the co, near the co-pilot. We landed in a bay, the Tolson Bay, which Ray had Ray Beck the Trapper had a, uh, his camp there on Hook Island. And we landed. Uh, we were brought out to an island. To, uh, that's where we were going to stay, sleep, and 
Ray put up a tent with uh, that slept four people. It was a ground floor, and we brought in our sleeping bags. Uh, he cut pine branches off some of the pine trees for us to sleep on, and the tent was full of holes. <laughs> had rips and tears and holes, and luckily we didn't have any rain for uh, for that seven or eight days until the last day. But I have a picture of what that uh, tent looked like. I'll show it to you. No, lift it up a bit more, Eddie. Over to your over to your left. There you go. There you go. A bit more. A bit more. Yep, and that was on both ends. And that was about nine o'clock in the morning on the first day. It was myself and Bill Tenney scratching his head, the old pike hunter, and then John Barson was there, and we were. Uh, that's where we stayed. And the reason they. And the reason they kept us on an island like that was because Ray always brought up his sled dogs from the reservation, Fort Resolution, and he tied each one up to a tree and because uh, someone had to feed them while uh, we were up there fishing, and they barked a lot at night. If there was bears or moose or whatever animals, wolves, they would bark, and they didn't want to keep us awake, so they put us on this island. They would pick us up around 10 o'clock in the morning, bring us to Hook Island for a breakfast, and the breakfast was usually eggs and toast and some bacon and then we would go out fishing on the lake now that was in spring in the spring of 1988 um, i was teamed up with john barzen bill always fished with jan eggers and uh the numbers of that trip were staggering um, yeah, Eddie, tell the, tell the viewers, I mean, I've been up there with you on a number of trips and we've pioneered different places, you and I, over the years since those heady days. But tell the viewers the, the mind-blowing numbers of giant pike you guys got tied into. Well, all of the fish were weighed. All of the big fish were weighed on certified Shetland scales, the brass scales. So they were, they were all within probably a half a pound, uh, if not right on, right on the button. And... We ended up after that seven days uh, of fishing 50% of the time in the boats and 15% 50 of the time on, on the rocks. There was a lot of rocks uh, with, with deep drop-offs near Hook Island. And uh, we ended up uh, catching from 15 pounds to 19 pounds, 19 and a half pounds, over 353 pike. My and gosh. And from 20 pounds. That's and unbelievable, pounds, Ed. It, it is, and, and from 20 pounds and over uh, to around 28 pounds, we caught 134 pike that size. So you had 134 now, pike over 20 pounds. Over 20 pounds on that trip. Oh, wow. And it, it, was, it, was, it was like uh, being in heaven. If you're a pike hunter, it's like, how are people ever going to believe this story? And, and, uh, and Eddie, Bill and, Kenny, Eddie, can Bill you show... Kenny brought us on a trip, huh? Can you show the yes. viewers some of the spoons? Put up some of the spoons on the drawings or whatever you have of the spoons to give an idea of the type of lures. They were very simple. If you're using like Len Thompson number two, five of diamonds or Dr. Spoons yep. or Johnson Minnow yes. Baits. Yes. Um, at the time we fished mostly spoons. We didn't fish any jerk baits, crank baits. It was mostly spoons, some weedless. Uh, this is the Johnson, uh, one and an eighth ounce Johnson silver minnow. Uh, yeah, I see that. There's a Johnson Silver Minnow to the to the viewers. Yeah, move it over to your it's left. Got, it it has a single hook. Yeah, yeah. It has a single hook, and Bill always put a rubber worm on it that was black with a with a green tail. He said that's the ticket for these big pike. They love that tail and that and that uh, that green little tip on it. And these are an ounce and an eighth uh, silver minnows. Kept them good and sharp and. Uh, they yielded a lot you, you, of big you, pike. Eddie, there was an amazing sequence of casts you told me that, you know, many times you get twin treble hookups, everyone into big 20 pounders at the same time. At all times. Uh, the guides, on, when we were fishing on the rocks, the, all the guides did all day long or all night long because it's the land of the midnight sun, so it didn't get really dark until midnight. The sun went down a little bit and then it went back up again. They were just taking big monster pike off of your hooks all day, day all long. night. If you were well, Eddie, fishing. it's been a great treat for me to see you over there in Wysada, Minnesota, in Minneapolis, the Twin Cities there uh, over in Minnesota. Eddie Dusek, big pike hunter from Wysada, Minneapolis. Thank you so much for coming on fishtalk.tv.
Thanks, Al. Great to talk to you. You're watching fishtalk.tv. In studio with me this week is Jean-Philippe Carnet, who's a fantastic predator angler, and he has a guiding business called peshirlandconamara.com. You'll be able to see that later on in the credits. But you are, JP, also very interested in sea fishing. Oh, yes. Now, tell yeah. me more about your Lewisburg exploits, sea fishing. Uh, since uh, this year, I have... Uh, I, I, sold uh, and I organize uh, sea fishing tours okay. Okay? because uh, after many years practicing uh, it's full absolutely full the density it's amazing of Pollock 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 yes Wow yes and uh, you can uh, have from uh, the shore or from the boat uh, good uh, good size Pollock good size yeah, yeah. And they are very strong uh, the, the kilo for kilo pound yeah. for pound Pound for pound. Look, there's a lovely photograph there now. There's I, a guy fly I, fishing. I do that also on fly fishing, on oh, wow. fishing with a spinner and a nice shot. soft bait. Yeah. And uh, we get uh, two to five kilos. Two five kilo fish. Yeah, well, yeah. And what weight, weight rod would that have been? What AFTM rating would that have been? An eight? It's a no, it's a nine. It's a nine rod. It's a nine rod with uh, eight. Uh, eight the line. line. The line. Yes. And, and, and what sort of flies or streamers or bugs are you using? It's uh, fast sinking. Fast sinking, yes. Fast Are sinking. they big streamers? No, small streamers. Small. Yes, yeah, small streamers, about uh, seven centimeters, no more. And, uh, and like a uh, sand eel or fluorocarbon leader. Fluorocarbon also lighter than uh, for a pike. And and do you recommend this now to the viewers out there who are watching around the world that if you've got salt water nearby, that often it's a resource that is not exploited and yeah. you've got a virgin stock of fish to have a go at it's uh, it's amazing it's amazing you, you, you were you surprised at how good this fishing is oh yes it's very good and uh, it's, it's very exciting. funny uh, and exciting it's quite often we get uh, with three fishermen three fish at the same time oh well so yeah. if you yeah. triple header oh, it's uh, amazing which is not often you'll get across that now when you're in fresh water no, not very often, just maybe for perch. We might get doubles, uh, but we get we triples doubles and quadruples. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's an achievement. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, when you saw uh, with uh, the fish finder, the, 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 the fish, you know, and 99% uh, of the time, you know, you get, uh, you get bites. Man, that yeah, 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 yeah. Now, what, what lures are you throwing these guys? Uh, uh, or is it is it dead fish, cut baits, or what is it? No, no, my, uh, my favorite lures uh, is gulp. Gulp. Oh yes. That's Berkeley gulp. Describe it's that now to the viewers. What is this stuff? Alors, um, it's uh, made with uh, amidon from amino ma acids from corn. Corn yeah. amino acids. Okay, yeah, from yes. maize. Yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, with uh, attractant. Attractant. And they're different sizes. And different is it, are, are they rubber things that you're putting into it? Is it rubber ba or, is, or is it? Describe what's it, what it is. I've I seen put it. a jig head. Uh, you put it. the jig heads in. You yeah, dip yeah. it in it. Yes, exactly. Okay. I put a jig head. Uh, it depends on uh, the, the depth of the water between uh, 70 gram and 28 maximum. Yeah, where, where can you buy this stuff? Uh, uh, in France. Uh, sometimes you can find them in okay, Ireland also. In Ireland, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, good, they do a small fish and uh, eels. Okay. And, and uh, where do you fish? Now describe how you fish this stuff. Gulp. Is it from the rocks? Can I fish from the shore? From the shore and from the boat. You know, uh, on the top of the weeds. Uh, at the end of the rocks. Uh, so describe the sort of terrain you're looking for that you think is good holding area for these pollock. Uh, rocks. In um, flowing tide? Uh, it, you need current. You need current, okay. That's all. So movement, ebb or flowing exactly. in. Once exactly. there's movement and That's you're watching the weed go backwards and forwards, the yes. kelp, yes, is exactly. that all the signals you're looking for? Exactly. Because yeah. we're trying to tell our viewers how to maybe yeah. learn from you. How, how uh, you have to find the uh, current. Look for current that's, movement. That's the yeah. first uh, important things, you know. And the depth will, will be between uh, five, five meters to uh, twenty meters. Okay. Of a current. No, uh, on depth water. Of oh, depth of water. Yes, so you've exactly. a lot of water there, then. Yeah. yeah, yeah good depth. Yeah. Yeah, but even depth water, you get uh, good, good size pollock, mostly, uh, most wow. of the times. That's fantastic. Time. Yeah, and. Uh, and you use uh, the gulp on, the, on jigging. And how big are these baits that you're using on the jig heads? Uh, are they small little rubber shads? Uh, you have different size. Uh, between 10 uh, centimeters for 7 and 10 centimeters for the, um, for the shad. Yes. And you can have also, and my favorite, it's uh, the swimming eel. Swimming eel. Yes. Okay, that's perfect. by Savage Gear, is it? That type of one, is it? No, swimming it's, eel? No, it's uh, gulp. Gulp again? Yeah, yeah, I've okay. done that. But how long are these fellows? Uh, 15, 20 centimeters. Okay, 15 centimeters, 6 inches. So it's roughly 8 inches long, yeah, 20 yeah, 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 centimeters. Yeah. That's quite a big. But yes, but it looks like uh, um, uh, 
Uh, they're soft and they distract you. Uh, yes, so I know the garfish. Uh, yes, the garfish on the uh, sand eels. Sand, sand eels. Sand eels. Exactly. Okay. I was looking for sand the eels. world sand eels. Okay. But, but because we, like get, we get massive sand eels. Okay. Here. And Do you get surprise catches when you're doing this? Do bass show up and other species? Um, I am working on the bass uh, at the moment, but uh, I'm quite uh, at the north and it's uh, quite difficult. So to on the, find. It's on the sort of borderline of their biological range. Yes, where they yes, are, it's uh, where you are, no North exactly, Mayo. Yeah, North Mayo. It's yeah. Uh, quite. Uh, quite but but how, how many? Like on a good day, if you've got three guys fishing, what sort of a catch could you have oh, I for Pollock? I I don't like to speak about uh, well, the results. Well, yeah, I'm interested in this. I know oh, our viewers you, out there are interested. <laughs> you will uh, you will see some videos soon uh, also on internet. But uh, with three fishermen, if you get 100 fish per fisherman, it's not uh, how many? It's not uh, how many? Completely impossible. A hundred? Yes. Did you hear that, guys? In good day. 100 yeah. Pollock per fisherman in a good day is not unusual. No. You. <laughs> But I it's like this. But it's completely funny. Well, it's, that's, uh, that is now a nugget of On information. This kind of, it's this kind of lure. That's wonderful. It's that's uh, wonderful. But if, even if you don't uh, jig or nothing, just uh, you leave your lure like that, you know, they bite. So that's, a bit, that's, so, that, that, so that's an amazing challenge for your guests to try and get 100 in a day. Is that correct? Ah, why not? Yeah, it's, uh, it's not a big challenge. It's uh, uh, until uh, 100, it's a normal day. After, it's a normal day. After 100, okay. it's a good day. It's a really good day. Well, I have a challenge for you now. Yeah? We're now at the Fish Talk Challenge. And as you know, it's every week we put our studio guest or guests, depending on who's with us, through what we call a very nice little exercise of threading up, line through the rod. I'll go and get it for you. Okay. Linking it up to two different pieces of tackle, all under a ticking clock. Now Thanks. that's a seven foot standard bay caster. Hmm. With the old. Uh, As you can see it with a reel that you are quite familiar with. Oh, it was my first uh, bait casting reel. And then we have two it's here. Very nice one. We have. This is what we call a dumbbell float after the late great Dennis Pye, a pike angler of great renown in England. Mm -hmm. So that there, the line is to be threaded through this and then okay. tied off at the nose of that small Magnum Rapala. With pleasure. Now I'm going to get you set up. Jean-Philippe, no. And then we get the timer going. So you have your level wind, you're going through there, yeah. the guide, and no you have problem. 10 guides on the, the rod. And we will then get you over here now. And I'm going to show you now who you're up against. You're up against the great and the good of Irish fishing. That's some very good fishermen, yeah. The great and the good as regards I don't know about they're great fishermen all the time. I think they're very good at trying to tread line through things. So at the moment, we have Carl Hughes. He's been our leader from day yeah, one. So. Very impressive. He's the Michael Schumacher of the game here. Barry Darby, Stuart Price from the Mount Falcon Estate. Mm -hmm. Kevin Lyons, who was with us last week from up there in Longford. Jeff Cooper from Roscommon. Pascal Le Rissier, as you well know, oh, yes. journalist and wonderful fisherman from France. Ken Whelan, Dr. Ken Whelan, the fishery scientist. Mick Flanagan, local journalist and angling guru and guide. And Paul Burke from Inland Fisheries Ireland, who's their information officer. So that's who you're up against, 123 on the clock. Are you up for it? Oh, yes. We split now, it I am going to count you down, a three, two, one, to get you going. Okay. Is that okay? So Perfect. three, two, one, go. So Jean-Philippe Carnet, who is from Lewisburg, over the west of Ireland, proprietor of PeshIrlandConamara.com, is up for the Fish Talk Challenge. 15 seconds gone. I'm good. Not easy. Yeah, you put me some pressure. <laughs> You're going well, though. You have the thing lined up. 22 seconds gone. Oh, I'm very two seconds gone. And this is something that you're doing throughout your daily life as a fishing guide and it's, oh, yes. it's kind of and one of those faster, things that faster on my boat. it's a psychological thing we, we always take it for granted because we do it so regularly as a routine process yes it can be also rather fitting my hand you're doing very well you're going up through so 48 seconds oh my god 49 50. JP Carney, one of the great floor anglers, fantastic fishing guide, and a man who's caught many, many, many monster pike oh, and ferox trout. You are now under pressure. One minute and five seconds. Over. Oh, well. Anything is, you want to get up there before Paul Burke. 
<laughs> My buddy Paul Burke, Inland Fisheries Ireland Information Officer, who's a great bit of fun. Good sport. There now, you're there, you're going well. Wow, you're there now. So okay. down to the dumbbell float, the Dennis Pye dumbbell float. 127 seconds. JP from France, originally born 200 kilometers south of Paris, now moved over to Ireland and running a business here successfully. Fine. Yeah. I am checking yeah. You're okay. You You're okay. I, I don't mean to put you under extreme pressure. It's I think the process. It it uh, creates its own dynamic dynamism, as they say. You're doing well. We've you've not, gone, we've you've got gone you through. Off. Just tie it off whatever way you like, and then I will stop and I will tell you how you're doing. One minute, minute, 59, two minutes gone. Oh my God. I am very late. You're a good sport. Thanks. You there? There we go. Two. Oof. I'm just going to show it to the camera here. There we go. 2.08. <laughs> Thank you for being such a good sport. I'm Thanks gonna, a lot. Uh. I'm going to show you now here. 2.08. Oh so we have your name here. Already I am not done the out. So this way we do it, folks, as you know. That's his name there, ready for action. And you're joining the great and the good on the leader board. So it's two. Uh, oh, oh, eight. Now, so where do you think you're going to be there? Two, oh, eight. Well, you've done rather well. You have come below Pascal. Well, you were I, was, I, was, I was expecting to beat Pascal. And above, and above Ken. So let I me see. I was expecting to beat Pascal. But, uh, we will get you here. So we move down here. There's one, Paul Burke. Just gets relegated slightly down. Mick Flanagan down there. Ken Whelan down, and then we put you in. So you're still very respectable there. Jean-Philippe Carnet, you came in at 2.08. <laughs> You've been a great sport. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And you know what? Uh, Isn't it a bit of a crack we're having? Yeah. That this is now the Fish Talk Challenge. And I'll tell you one thing, it puts everyone under the spotlight. <laughs> I, don't was, uh, I was not expecting to shake my own. Uh, well, that's because I think the realization yeah. is it, 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 it always appears with these mundane, simple tasks but, but do you that you do every day do you think is it's actually a, quite it's difficult. A, it's a good pattern. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was not so fast, you know, it's the first time I. <laughs> that's it there. I, Look, it's a simple thing, but it makes for difficulties when you're in the studio yeah, yeah. and the spotlight is upon you. Okay. But you've been a great sport. Thanks a but lot. But anyway, you know, this has been another great show, a bit of fun. Uh, Jean-Philippe Carnet, who's a wonderful guide, and he's from Louisbourg, originally from 200 kilometers south of Paris, living over here in Ireland now, running his business, and it's called PecheIrlandConamara.com, and Jean-Philippe, JP, if you gave me the go-ahead to call yes, you, of course. that's your abbreviated name, you've been a great sport, I really enjoyed your company, but I learned something this time, Thanks. really, really important nugget, this pollock fishing, I'll tell you one thing, guys, out there, pollock fishing, Get stuck in there, go into it, get into it. I think it is a resource we could all have a go at around our coasts because pollock are a very, very common species along our shorelines, rocky shorelines. And JP's advice there, the moving current where you see the weed fronds moving backwards and forwards, that is the key around a rocky shoreline to get stuck in to, for, for a go at those fish. Well, sadly, it's come to the end of another episode of fishtalk.tv. It's a resource for you guys. Let us know what's going on in your patch. Give us your information about what you're doing. If you're involved in any activities, shall we say, that is bringing young people into the sport, we'd love to hear about it. Any initiatives that you're doing, maybe in conjunction with a tackle shop or otherwise, can you let us know that maybe you pass it on to us and we in turn will broadcast it to a greater audience because we too want to learn about it. But anyway, we want you to come and go to our website, fishtalk.tv, and let us know what's going on. Everything there is on that site. But Next week, we'll have some more very interesting guests from overseas and then also a man joining us in the studio. So until then, good night, good fishing, and thank you for watching.